Good evening, everyone. I certainly hope you had a great time last night as you were able to reach out to our community. And I just want to say thank you for all of your hard work. And uh, we are just continuing to pray that the seeds that were planted in the front yard parties there on Halloween night um, really take root. And I, I want to encourage you to follow up in any way you possibly can with anyone uh, that you talk to. And uh, we continue to pray that God draws them out to our fellowship and really looking forward uh, to what the Lord uh, wants to do. Well, of course, um, really yesterday was Reformation Day. And uh, what a great series uh, we had. I know I had a lot of fun uh, going through the solas that I was teaching and certainly hearing Pastor uh, Mike and Joel uh, in their solas and uh, just uh, thinking through these great foundational truths. And boy, I had a great time on Sunday just kind of wrapping up and concluding, uh, you know, the sola series with uh, to the glory of God alone. Nothing like it. Uh, you know, sola dea gloria, uh, he is glorious, he is worthy of our praise, he is worthy of our lives, and, and this is the reason uh, that we were born. This is the reason we were created by God, was to live a life that ultimately reflects his glory, and it's only when we do that, we truly find ourselves being satisfied. Uh, and, and I mentioned this in, in the sermon, certainly taken from the Westminster Shorter Catechism, the chief, you know, what is the chief end of man? Uh, to glorify God and to enjoy uh, Him forever. And it's true, the more we glorify God, the more we are satisfied in our own soul. Because when we live our lives for the very purpose we were created, we experience that very purpose that, that God created us for, and, and we find that satisfaction and that joy. And there's nothing like it. There's no other uh, area uh, of, of, you know, uh, my soul that can be content uh, but in Christ and, and, and walking with God and, and living a life for His glory. And, you know, there was so much in the message. I mean, there were so many verses I went through and there's so many I left out. Uh, but, uh, you know, suffice it to say, uh, we, we touched on at the end you know, kind of bringing us after seeing God in his glory, bringing us to the place of how do we glorify God? We glorify God through our good works. We glorify God, you know, let your light so shine among men, they'd see your good works and glorify uh, your father in heaven. And Jesus said that this is how you glorify my father by bearing much fruit. What's very exciting is this Sunday, we now move back into John and we start in John 14, and we get right into the very heart of, of really everything we've been talking about. As Jesus pours out his heart to his disciples before he goes to the cross, it's kind of Jesus' last words to his disciples, and it's about, I'm departing, and the Holy Spirit is coming. And as the Spirit comes, he's going to dwell within you. And what he's going to do, Jesus says this in John 14, he says, I have, I, I'm not going to leave you as orphans but I'm going to come to you. And now what's he talking about? He's talking about the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. He's not going to leave us as orphans, but he's going to come to us through the Spirit. As the Spirit takes up residence in our hearts as believers in the new covenant, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. We, we saw on Sunday, looking back to the uh, manifest glory of God, there in the tabernacle, there in the temple. As God's presence showed up, now God's presence lives in me. It's an incredible concept. It's almost too difficult for us to grasp because of all of our carnality in the world that we live in. But as we get in God's presence and we just surrender our lives uh, to him and allow his word to transform us, we begin to realize that the reason we are here is to shine forth God's glory from our lives, that people would see how great God is, and they would see that through our, our very lives. And, you know, I, I just really want to encourage you guys to think through that. A, a, a chapter, a couple chapters I wasn't able to go through, it's Second Corinthians chapters 3 and chapter 4. I encourage you guys to read that on your own time. But, uh, you know, it's, it's such a powerful uh, section. It starts by Paul saying, that we are living epistles known and read by all men. Meaning this, men aren't going to come to church, but they're going to look at the Christian's life and they're going to read that life 
and they're going to determine who Christ is. Well, Paul goes on in that chapter to talk about that it's not of us, but it's, it's only of the work of the Spirit. And he says, and he uses the word glory often, and he talks about how the glory of God was manifested uh, in the Old Covenant at Mount Sinai with Moses. We saw that on Sunday. And he says, if, if the Old Covenant, the giving of the law, was glorious, how much more glorious, and he uses that phrase, more glorious, is, is the New Covenant. Very, very powerful uh, you know, statement that he makes. And he goes on to say, and we all, I think, know the verse where he talks about being transformed from glory to glory, even by the Spirit of the Lord. And then he goes into chapter 4 of 2 Corinthians and there he talks about how uh, that the Satan has blinded the eyes of unbelievers. But the light of the gospel, he says, of the glory of God, of the image of God, is shining forth through us and from us. And he says, we don't preach ourselves, but we preach Christ. And then he goes on to say in verse 7 that we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the exceeding greatness of his power might not be of us, but of him. And I, I just think about that. You know, we are simple earthen vessels, broken vessels, aren't we? And it's amazing. Think about your testimony. It's the glory of God that's transformed your life, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the work of the Spirit, who's taking you from glory to glory, who's transforming you. And it's that very glory that wants to shine through us. But sometimes we feel like, well, God's not going to work through me because I'm such a sinner. I have so, so many issues in my life. I, I, I do so many things that that are just so off. And you know, I want to really encourage us to recognize what the Word of God says. The Word of God says that it's not us. We don't preach ourselves. Thank God. <laughs> you don't have to preach yourself. We're going to preach Christ the Lord. We're going to we're gonna focus on Christ. And you know, I, I think of Gideon. Remember Gideon and his army? And they went out and the way they had they had torches and they had vessels and they had trumpets. And they were to break the vessel and when they broke the vessel, the light of the torch would shine forth and they'd blow that trumpet. That is exactly the picture. And that is a picture in the Old Testament of us. We're what? We're earthen vessels, but we have a light inside. And even in our brokenness, even in our broken parts, that light shines forth. For it is when we are weak, then we are strong. And I want you to think about that. It's not about you. It's not about me. It's not about my holiness it's about his holiness. It's about me getting out of the way. It's about me letting the Holy Spirit take control and shine forth God's glory. For Jesus says, as the Father sent me, and Jesus came to glorify the Father, so now I send you, and I'm giving you the Holy Spirit that he might empower you to go be witnesses of him. Think about it, church. This is the call that is on our lives. And so I encourage you guys as you discuss these lofty truths and, and really the heart of the gospel and the purpose of life. I mean, these are kind of some big topics as you discuss these. I pray the Holy Spirit radically, radically moves. God bless you guys and have an awesome, awesome night as you fellowship together.